In the top stories, Prime Minister Harris chairs formal meeting of cabinet, valedictorians awarded by the Prime Minister, and the general manager of Sol East Limited responds to gas dilemma. The details on these stories and more after the break. Hello and welcome to the ZIZ Channel 5 newscast. I'm Carla Barrage. Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris chaired a formal meeting of cabinet which took place on Monday, October 17th. The approval of concessions to small and medium-sized enterprises, the establishment of the St. Kitts and Nevis Probation and Child Welfare Board, and a number of recommendations relating to the Citizenship by Investment CBI program were among decisions made at the meeting. Director General of the St. Kitts Nevis Information Service, Les Roy Williams, in a post-cabinet briefing outlined the conditions for the establishment of the St. Kitts and Nevis Probation and Child Welfare Board. The St. Kitts and Nevis Probation and Child Welfare Board will be comprised of between 7 and 12 members with the responsibilities of providing and maintaining child care centers for children in need of care and protection providing counseling and other services for children in need of care and protection and to parents and guardians of those children. The board, now constituted under an amendment of 2013, is also responsible for appointing both the Adoption Committee and the Child Justice Committee, which are integral to the full implementation of the Child Justice Act. In terms of the Citizenship by Investment program, Williams revealed the recommendations that were approved. These recommendations include an accelerated application process, a review of legislation and regulations, including consideration of a broader pool of initiatives for consideration under the CBI program. During the meeting, Cabinet received an update from the technical team of the Ministry of National Security, comprising Deputy Commissioner of Police Hill Y. Brandy. The major outcomes of the 2017 Budget Estimates meeting were also discussed. Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris returned to his alma mater, the Keon High School, on Wednesday for the presentation of awards to the school's valedictorians. Keandre Weeks and Deshan Richards are the valedictorians of the Keon High School graduating class of 2016. Prime Minister Harris said it is a historic moment not only because there are two valedictorians but also because both are males. He encouraged them to continue in their pursuit of academic excellence. I want to convey my own special congratulations to each of the young men, Mr. Richards and Mr. Weeks and to wish them well in their future endeavors. So this is just a start. We hope that you will choose to continue to learn, to engage in professional development. Whatever you do, I encourage you to continue to be a model for the other students at the Kayan High School so that they can emulate your conduct, your behavior, and your performance, not just in school, but outside of the the sacred grounds of the Keon High School. Valedictorians Kendra Weeks and Dashan Richards thanked the Prime Minister for his show of support. On behalf of myself, I would like to thank the Honorable Prime Minister for presenting me with a token to showcase that he is with me in terms of my educational success. Thank you again. Thank you very much. I would also like to thank the Prime Minister for showcasing his appreciation and his gratitude in terms of being a part of the Kenya High School and I would like to say thank you for everything. Thank you very much. Sir. The short but significant ceremony was chaired by principal of the Keon High School, Francis Morris. After much speculation, conflicting statements and sites of long lines caused by malfunctioning vehicles, General Manager of Sol EC Limited St. Kitts, Roger Brathwaite, spoke with ZIZ to dispel rumors about the recent gas dilemma. 
He said it all began when he received a phone call on Monday from Frisco's owner, Mr. Sylvester Fraser. On Monday, I uh, got a call just before 7 p.m. from Mr. Fraser saying that he'd been alerted to some problems that customers were having at the station who had recently filled up. Um, and in fact, some vehicles had stalled along the side of the road. Uh, we then arranged to meet at the site and it was related to customers who had filled up between 6 and 6.50 p.m. Uh, that day. Brathwaite confirmed that the gasoline did in fact contain water. We were also then investigating uh, and we were able to confirm yes it was water at the station uh, at the pumps. Uh, the, the, the lines were then flushed, uh, the filters were cleaned and then the next day in fact a, a fresh delivery of gasoline was delivered to the station and the station actually reopened. The general manager said in efforts to clear the air, it was necessary for persons to understand what led to the petrol error. What led to this, uh, our investigations uh, revealed that there was a section of pipeline here at the depot which was changed out. And that pipeline, before it could be put back into service, the, the wells had to be pressure tested. And to do that, you fill the lines with, with water. Um, you then pressure test it. Then the lines were drained and vacuumed out. It would appear that a, a quantity of water still remained in the line. And the first delivery that we made uh, that Monday uh, was to Frisco, and that ended up in the gasoline which went to that site. He said the gas station did everything in its power to fix the problem and please its customers. A number of the customers were on the forecourt, so we met with them. Uh, we explained that any who had broken down alongside the road, we would immediately make arrangements to have their vehicles towed back to the station or to their car dealership if that's what they wanted. Uh, those who also needed to get home, we said we'd also arrange uh, car rentals for them, and, and that we did. Uh, we are very sorry. Uh, we apologize to all the customers involved for the inconvenience that it caused them. It's something that shouldn't have happened, but I'm glad we were able to catch it quickly. Um, and be able to remedy the situation. General Manager Brathwaite said that salt takes product quality very seriously and will ensure that all precautions are taken to avoid a recurrence. After the break, Keon Primary Counseling Division launches Empowerment Week. Stay with us. As the fight against breast cancer continues in our federation, the Pink Lily Cancer Care Foundation, through their new campaign, Changing the Face of Cancer, has moved into high gear as they attempt to create public awareness and promote good health. According to the founder of the foundation, Lee Paris Cambridge, the Changing the Face of Cancer campaign was inspired by her own life experience. This is Changing the Face of Cancer. And what it is, is I am lending my face to this campaign to change the face of cancer. Nine years ago I was diagnosed with breast cancer and sailed through it, had all the treatment, I was bald, hairs grew back and recently, Easter this year, I found that I had a bit of a, a tummy that was growing and I had to go back to England to get it checked out on the recommendation of the doctors in Nevis because they saw that there was some fluid there and they were a bit concerned and so on going to England a week later I was re-diagnosed with cancer. Paris Cambridge said she noticed that countries outside the Federation have different methods of treating cancer that are not practiced in St. Kitts and Nevis. In an instant I then thought but I'm in England and I can get you know there's a lot of information here and I can get looked after and treated without the financial burden. What about St Kitts and Nevis? Who is there to look after them? And I always hear stage four cancer too far gone. And I started researching, I joined a forum with other stage four patients and discovered that we can actually help ourselves and there's actually more information out there which obviously doctors don't tell us certain things because they're trained in one area. But we actually have more power and I started changing my diet because I understood what cancer was through all my research. Cambridge also encouraged persons with cancer not to give up hope. The forum that I'm on with other stage four people, their cancers have been reversed and they're in the all clear. And so it really isn't the death sentence that we once knew it to be. And if we empower ourselves with information and share information and change our lifestyles by our diet, we need to exercise. We need to have a positive mental attitude. And have, we're a Christian nation, so we have to have faith above everything else that 
we can, you know, we can beat cancer sooner, but we need to support one another. And so I'm lending my face to this campaign to change the face of cancer and beat cancer sooner. The Pink Lily Cancer Care Foundation will have their fundraiser walk on October 22nd through Gingerland Nevis. The Kayon Primary School has launched its first Empowerment Week, which will run from October 16th to 20th. Counselor at the Kayon Primary School, Ms. Donna Peets, says partnership is the right equation for a child-friendly school environment, and as such, the theme Welcoming School plus Involved Parents Equal Student Success captures the focus of the Empowerment Week. The week of activities, which began on Sunday with a church service, is organized with a view to get parents and teachers working together. Activities include Parent Involvement Day, Tag Day, Health Screening Day, Parents Workshop, Millennium Parenting, and Movie Night, all running consecutively at the school. Permanent Secretary Mr. William Hodge told the Education Media Unit he was pleased with the level of creativity being utilized by schools as they pursue the Child Friendly Schools Initiative. The Child Friendly School Initiative is a UNICEF funded and supported program being implemented by the Ministry of Education with the intention of ensuring an environment that is physically safe, emotionally secure and psychologically enabling. Past students of the then Sandy Point High School and present students of the Charles E. Mills Secondary School have come together to form the 50th Anniversary Committee to commemorate the school's 50 years of existence. Deputy Chief Education Officer and past students of the then Sandy Point High School, Mr. Darrell Lloyd, explained the aim of the committee. He also outlined the theme for this year's anniversary celebrations. The aim of the committee is to facilitate the commemoration of this proud milestone under the theme 50 years of excellence reflecting on the past embracing the future as a member of the 50th anniversary committee Lloyd encouraged all past and present students to support the anniversary activities I want to make a strong appeal to all persons who have been a part of this institution to really come out and celebrate the historic milestone and also to celebrate this great institution, an institution that has done so much for us. The Deputy Chief Education Officer also reminded persons that the 50th Anniversary Committee is scheduled to meet at the Charles E. Mills Secondary School grounds on Monday, October 24th at 6 p.m. Coming up, Brazil's Zika virus families seek government help. The details when we come back. Can you afford to lose everything? In times of uncertainty, ensure you have the security of Quartz Payment Protection. When you shop with Quartz Ready Finance Gold or Ultimate Plan, if you lose your job after six months of making payments, our redundancy coverage ensures that the payment on your account continues for up to 12 months. Don't risk losing everything. Shop with Quartz Ready Finance and get the payment protection plan that protects you against redundancy, disability, death, and loss of item due to natural disaster disaster, fire, flood, or theft. Courts Ready Finance with Payment Protection. Courts Bringing Value Home. Parents of babies born with the Zika virus in Brazil say the government's promises of cash support are not enough. It has been a year since the start of the epidemic in the country. As his viewers, Rob Matheson explains. Angelica takes the long drive to the medical center where doctors will treat her daughter. One-year-old Luisa has congenital Zika syndrome. Luisa's arms and legs are rigid. She needs regular treatment to make them more flexible. We come full of love because we see that they need this therapy. We come with strength too. We have to leave everything behind so they can get therapy. Late last year, there was a rapid increase in cases of babies being born with small heads in northern Brazil. Researchers eventually linked the Zika virus to a birth defect called microcephaly. Little William suffers from seizures. He needs regular medication if his mum can find it. 
If they stop taking these medications, they have more seizures. We already struggle to pay for this medicine. And sometimes, even in the pharmacies, we are unable to find it. We must go to several pharmacies to find it. Families earning less than $70 a month make up roughly half the 2,000 registered cases in Brazil. Before she was impeached, President Dilma Rousseff announced that those families would get an additional 275 US dollars a month. Parents like Angelica still have to borrow money from friends and family to pay for treatment. The coastal city of Recife, like many other parts of Brazil, is suffering from a two-year recession. The city's health secretary wants to set up a special Zika virus clinic, but can't find the money to pay for it. The state, the federal government and the cities must help each other. The city's financial resources are strained to their limit. So it is important that the state and federal government take a more active role. Some parents say they're being ignored. We want the government to help us. The government should put themselves in our shoes for at least one minute. We struggle a lot with these children. Government leaders are proposing to cap public spending for the next 20 years, which may mean even less cash for public health and more hardship for the families of Zika babies. Rob Matheson, Al Jazeera. Some 80 local and international companies have signaled their intention to jointly develop a local onshore and gas facility in Guyana. Royden James has more. As the government continues to prepare for the eventuality of oil production here in Guyana, some 18 entities of both local and international origin have signaled their intention to jointly develop offshore oil and gas facilities here. This disclosure was made by Natural Resources Minister Rafael Trotman last Friday. We have had interest from as far away as Dubai, from Asia, from the US, from the UK, and of course, from here in Guyana and we'd like to give both the local and the foreign companies an equal right to make presentations. Government is looking to enter into a private uh, public partnership where government has an equity in whatever onshore facilities established and we can uh, then ensure that Guyanese um, can benefit. The minister pointed out also that the government is in the process of preparing seven pieces of legislation which will see the complete overhaul of the Petroleum Act as well as the regulations that accompany the Petroleum Act. The legislation will be coming for the establishment of a new Petroleum Commission, a regulatory agency. We are also developing regulations for local content, for health and safety, for the environment. We are developing legislation as well for the use of the money. The minister also disclosed that a United Kingdom think tank will be coming to Guyana to help decide whether it will be feasible to build an oil refinery here and if that can be done, what is the best model. We have commissioned a study and I hope and expect that before the end of the year, government will be guided um, from an economic standpoint whether or, not, whether or not we should have a refinery, whether or not government should have a stake in such a venture or whether it should be left to the private sector on its own. Other countries have demonstrated um, that when they've gotten involved, and I refer to Suriname in particular, they are now struggling because the price has diminished drastically and they're left with, for all intents and purposes, a white elephant. The minister said the establishment of a refinery has to be carefully thought out. Roy Den James, HGP Nightly News. Coming up, Britain's vote to leave EU hits food prices. Stay tuned. It has been almost four months since Great Britain voted to leave the European Union. Those who campaigned to stay warned that the British economy may be hit hard by the vote to leave. The British pound continues to tumble and the consumers are paying the price. More in this report. The effects of Britain's Brexit vote are starting to bite. But is it crunch time for consumers? This gourmet popcorn company has expanded rapidly over the past five years. But since voting to leave the EU in June, the pound's fallen 18% against the dollar. 
It now costs more to import key ingredients, and that can mean an increase in prices. I think the reality is, you know, our, our sugar price has gone up 20%, our chocolate price has gone up 5%. These things are going to continue whilst the exchange rate continues its sort of downward momentum. So uh, I think we're playing a bit of a wait and see over the next few months. Inflation may be the sign of an economy in trouble, but it's certainly not all bad news. The cost of the raw materials to make this popcorn may have gone up, but it's now much cheaper for other countries to buy it. Imports are dearer, exports are cheaper. And post-Brexit, it's going to be more important than ever for the UK government to encourage the world to buy British. But turning the UK into a nation of exporters isn't that simple. Uh, exports account for about 10% of our economy, so it's great news, especially if our exports can really capitalise on this fall in sterling. However, it's not necessarily going to protect the, uh, the economy generally because we are a consumption-led economy. So anything that hits the consumer, such as rising prices, which could dent consumption going forward, that could really weigh on our economy in the future. For now, the weaker pounds helped some companies, like the British luxury fashion firm Burberry, achieve record sales after tourists flocked to its London stores to take advantage of cheaper prices. But Brexit's had a negative impact on British travellers. This month, sterling hit an all-time low in exchange rates, with 17 UK airports offering less than one euro to the pound. However, there could be a silver lining. Several low-cost airlines, including Ryanair, are cutting airfares to entice Brits abroad and avoid a drop in profits. The biggest concern for many consumers, though, is an increase in the average food shop. Last week, the UK's largest supermarket chain, Tesco, briefly pulled stocks of ice cream and Marmite, a popular British spread, after the supplier, Unilever, demanded an increase in prices to make up for the falling pound. For now, at least, low prices and customer loyalty matter more than a squeeze on supermarket profits. But with everything from clothes, petrol and yes popcorn likely to get more expensive the pressure on the pound means pressure on prices Neve Barker Al Jazeera London up next in sports division FIFA officials off to CONCACAF Champions League stay tuned Hey, what you doing? The time passing. Next thing you know, it's a Christmas Eve in, and there's hustle and bustle and fretting. Every year can't be the same thing. At Courts, everything waiting. The best deals, the best prices. Christmas this year, give you niceness. Come to Courts, you're invited. Let's go! Come to Courts, you know we've got the best in show. To be satisfied, come on, come on, let's go! Malcolm George Ramsey left the Federation on Tuesday to officiate as referee's assessor in a game to be played in Mexico between W Connections Wanderers and a team from Mexico. The match is a part of the last round of the matches in the CONCACAF Champions League. FIFA qualified referee Kimbell Ward also left the Federation on Tuesday. He traveled to Seattle where he will be the referee in another of the CONCACAF Champions League matches. Ramsey deemed it a privilege for himself and Ward to be selected to officiate in the final round of the matches in the league. Both referees are expected to return to the Federation on Friday. Former Major League Baseball star Kurt Schilling has announced his intention to run for the U.S. Senate. More in this report. On Tuesday, former Red Sox pitcher Kurt Schilling announced plans to run against Elizabeth Warren in the U.S. Senate if his wife agrees. In a wide-ranging three-hour radio interview with WPRO AM in Rhode Island, Schilling took questions from callers and said he'll run against Warren, a Massachusetts Democrat, in 2018, but must clear the decision with his spouse. He then said he has taken issue with Warren opposing a November ballot question aimed at dramatically expanding the number of charter schools in Massachusetts and added that he's not scared to debate her. Real Madrid continues to dominate. Real Madrid kept up its unbeaten start to the season's Champions League with a five-star performance against Ligia Warsaw at Bernabeu. More in this report. Real Madrid managed to keep its undefeated streak with a five-star performance against Ligia Warsaw in the Champions League at the Bernabeu. Real manager Zinedine Zidane said the following to the press after the game. 
Today we were more offensive, but defensively, we suffered a bit more. Other than that, I'm happy. We are always looking to improve. The balance of the team was not perfect at times. Today we played a more attacking XI, so there were more risks. Powerhouse Cristiano Ronaldo didn't manage to score, but the team still held their own. When we come back, we'll have another look at the stories that made the headlines. Recapping the top stories, Prime Minister Harris Chia's formal meeting of cabinet, valedictorians awarded by the Prime Minister, and the general manager of Sol EC Limited responds to gas dilemma. And that's the end of the ZIZ Channel 5 newscast. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kyle Verage. Goodbye.